This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So we're going to go through now and look at related parties. Uh, related parties, there's two things to think about. Uh, one, what is a related party? Uh, and then two, uh, what are the disclosures required within the financial statements for related parties and related party transactions? Uh, it's an important bit of disclosure within a set of financial statements because when we have related parties and related party transactions, uh, the transactions that take place between those related parties may not be at arm's length, okay, based upon the relationship between the two companies. Uh, so if that's the case, if the transaction isn't at arm's length, it might be that goods have been sold at a cheaper price than what they would have been sold elsewhere if it wasn't to a related party. Now, if those goods are sold elsewhere cheaper, then that might bring about an indicator of the different levels of performance of a particular business. So it's important that we identify related parties, identify the transactions to give a true performance indicator of how the business is done. Likewise, if there's been any trade on credit between related parties, and there are outstanding balances between the related parties. Again, we will need to disclose that to make sure that we give the true position of the business with regards to what is owed between those two parties who have either control or influence over each other. Okay. In the notes, you have a nice big long list uh, of situations that, that give you a related party. The key bits that you need to think about are the levels of control, and influence. Remember, control is the power to direct the operations of an entity and influence is the power to participate, isn't it? And a related party exists if there is an unbroken chain of control or influence. That's the key thing that you need to remember, an unbroken chain of control or influence. Uh, and it's, a, it's about judgment and we, we also thinking as well a little bit about the, the substance of the transactions and the definitions. So what we've got is if we have a parent company and that parent company controls a subsidiary, then by definition, the parent and the subsidiary are related parties. If the parent enters into an agreement and gains significant influence over an associate, then it has the power to participate in the decisions. It can influence the associate to, to transact with the parent. So the parent and the associate are related parties. You also need to be aware that there is an unbroken chain of control and influence between the sub, the parent and the associate. So if the parent and the associate are related parties, the parent controls the subsidiary. Uh, so essentially the subsidiary has the, the directors put in place by the parent. Uh, they can be controlled by the subsidiary and therefore they can influence the associate, can't they? OK, so as they're members of the same group, the subsidiary and the associate are related parties. OK, there's an unbroken chain of control and influence. Uh, if we go through there and look at a joint venture company. So we looked at joint arrangement, didn't we? Uh, when we went through there and looked at IFRS 11 and within there, there was a joint operation and a joint venture. Here you were focusing on the, the joint venture where a separate legal entity has been set up. We have two companies, company A and B, who are each venturers within the joint venture company. They have joint control over JV Co. Uh, there is control. So company A and JV Co are related parties. Uh, JV Co and company B are related parties, but just be very, very careful the two venturers, company A and B, are not related parties. They, they don't have control over one or the other and they have no influence over one or the other. The decisions that they make are totally independent, aren't they? OK, so if there were to be any transactions, uh, then that would not be a related party and therefore a not a related party transaction. So that's the one, first of all, that you need to be careful. The venturers are not related parties. Uh, if we carry on with the definitions and think as well about our, our groups and that we've seen, so you could have a parent and two subsidiaries, both controlled by the parent. Again, there's an unbroken chain of control, isn't there? Uh, again, if you could have a complex group with a parent, a sub and a sub subsidiary. Again, there is an unbroken chain of control. They are all members of the same group. 
So therefore the parent sub 1 and sub 2 are related parties, aren't they? Okay. Uh, if we just move it on a little bit further and take our group structure, parent, sub, associate, keeping it simple, uh, other related parties of the group will be key management personnel. So any directors of the parent, uh, they are related parties. Uh, any close family members of the director are a related party of the group. Okay. And then also in F1, you saw pensions. Um, one of those pension schemes was a defined benefit scheme, wasn't it? Uh, and if you have a defined benefit pension scheme, there is a separate company pension pot. And that pension pot, that scheme is a related party, isn't it? So any transactions between the company, the parent or the group and the scheme will need to be disclosed. But we'll touch upon the disclosures later on. OK, so as long as there is an unbroken chain of control or influence, then there is a related party. Uh, key management personnel, so directors are also related parties. Close family members of the directors are related parties of the group and any post-employment benefit plan, so defined benefit pension scheme. That pension scheme is also a related party. Uh, just be aware, uh, we've spoken about control and influence. Control is the power to direct, influence is the power to participate. But influence could be construed in a different fashion, couldn't it? A supplier has influence over your business, doesn't it? Uh, particularly if it, it's a large supplier of gas, electricity or water, if they were to turn that off, then that would have an impact on your business, wouldn't it? Customers, if you have one large major customer, if that customer went elsewhere, then that would have an impact on your business as well, wouldn't it? Uh, a bank, you've lent money from the bank or the bank grants you an overdraft facility. If the bank calls in that loan, if the bank doesn't allow you to extend that overdraft facility, you know, the bank has a bit of an influence over how your business operates, doesn't it? Uh, the government, again, the government laid down rules that your business needs to abide by, whether that's tax rules, health and safety rules. Again, that may make you think that they have a bit of influence over the business, but influence in a different way as opposed to being able to participate in the financial operating and investing decisions of an entity. Yeah, none of those businesses or entities mentioned there, suppliers, customers, bank or the government have the power to influence your decision, do they? Yeah, they don't influence the operating, financing or investing decisions that you make. OK, they haven't got the right to be heard. They can't attend board meetings, can they? And be an irritant and put the hand up, say, look, listen to me. Yeah, they can't. OK, so therefore... They are not related parties by definition. Never have been, never will be. So be aware of related parties and what are not related parties. If we just go through, finish off our related party definitions before we then begin to think about your related party disclosures. Uh, there's a very small example that you have there. This is an example from a past exam question of F1 under the old syllabus, because I think it previously was, if memory serves me right, in F1. Now I've been moved into F2, so that's a bit of a bonus. So what have you got? It says, which of the following would be regarded as a related party of CXZ? So that's the company that we are looking at. Who is a related party of it? Have a read, what, what do you think? Is it A? Is it B? Is it C? Is it D? Uh, I think the answer is, I think it's quite clear, isn't it? The answer is A. Yeah, the wife of CXZ's finance director. The finance director is key management personnel. The wife yeah, is a close family member, so they are related, aren't they? Okay. Yeah, so therefore, they are related parties, and therefore, A is the correct answer. Don't be put off with B, C, and D. Uh, B is a supplier, so we'd ignore that straight away. Doesn't matter that they supply 35% of the purchases. Don't start thinking that that gives them influence. It's not talking about ownership. It's just talking about a percentage of supplies made. Uh, the 
biggest customer gives 70%, sorry, 60% of the annual revenue, okay? Uh, again, it's not control yeah, in terms of ownership. It's just saying that that's the amount of revenue that they contribute. Uh, so again, not a related party. And likewise, D, yeah, the bank provides it with an overdraft and a loan facility. doesn't even matter they're at, they're at market rates or even below market rates. Uh, they are not a related party because they have no ownership interest. So therefore, there is no control and there is no influence based upon the definitions of directing the activities and participating in the activities. OK, uh, I, I couldn't see the questions being much more difficult than that, hopefully. OK, in the next session, we'll go through and just have a brief chat and look at the disclosures.